Ellen had one of the biggest falls from grace in Hollywood history, going from universally loved to hated in just a matter of months. She kept up the image of a genuine person whose main goal was to spread love and positivity, but behind the scenes she was completely different. Ellen's motto was be kind, and her entire brand was built around these two words. She sold a skincare line called Kind Science, a subscription box called The Kind Box, t-shirts, umbrellas, keys, the list goes on and on. This kind idea was reinforced during her show when she would give people money, new cars, donate huge amounts to charities, basically being the Mr. Beast of daytime TV. But a single tweet would mark the beginning of Ellen world being turned completely upside down. On March 20th, 2020, the comedian Kevin T. Porter would tweet, Right now, we all need a little kindness. You know, like how Ellen DeGeneres talks about? She's also notoriously one of the meanest people alive. Respond to this with the most insane stories you've heard about Ellen being mean, and I'll match every one with $2 to LA Food Bank. She has a sensitive nose, so everyone must chew gum from a bowl outside her office before talking to her. And if she thinks you smell that day, you have to go home and take a shower. When I was 15, The Ellen Show was doing a contest of fans making a bust of her and sending it to her. I worked so hard on this and even wrote her a letter. Weeks later, she used it as a prop in a game and gave it away to a random person with $500 attached to the bottom. A new staff member was told, every day she picks someone different to really hate. It's not your fault, just suck it up for the day and she'll be mean to someone else the next day. With this negative attention being focused towards Ellen, people began to look through her show's archives and find that she wasn't always as nice as she seemed. People are saying that uh that you're pregnant. There, there's rumors. Don't discuss that. Um, all right, well, you don't have to answer. No, that's okay. No, no honestly, you don't have to answer me. Let's just toast with champagne and decide But they've if, been uh, saying that since we... Oh, I can't believe you did this to me, Ellen. What? Let's toast to you not being pregnant. If you're not pregnant, then oh, we should... Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Mm. You're pregnant. <laughs> Tragically, Mariah miscarried a few months after the show. Now, of course, there's no way Ellen could have known this would happen, but a pregnancy is something that people want to reveal in their own way, especially when it's early on and the chance of complications are higher. But Mariah wouldn't be the only person who had a terrible experience on The Ellen Show. The Dutch YouTuber Nikki Tutorials said that Ellen was cold and distant to her when the cameras weren't rolling. She made Taylor Swift uncomfortable by talking about all the guys she supposed been with. She grabbed Kylie Jenner's hair without asking and then basically called her dumb afterwards. Yeah. All right. So uh, I'll talk to you in a second. Okay. Uh, you're you're uh, the brains behind this entire organization here. Um, <laughs> There was also a bizarre segment on the show called Ellen Found Your Facebook Photos, where members of her live audience would be publicly humiliated by having their old Facebook photos pulled up and laughed at. But that wasn't the only time that Ellen publicly humiliated her audience. She set up a free merch table with a small sign that said only take one, and when a woman took more than one item, Ellen made her sit in a chair in front of the audience and had everyone laugh at her. You go sit in that Ellen jail over there right now. <laughs> No, you're, no, you'll steal stuff back there. Come here, this way. During this time, a Reddit thread popped up in the subreddit r slash out of the loop, titled, what is going on with people hating Ellen DeGeneres and saying they see her true colors now? I went to a wedding about six years ago in Hollywood. At the wedding was a girl who was some sort of close assistant to Ellen. I reacted by saying, oh, that's so cool. How was it working with her? The response was along the lines of, actually, it's terrible. I quit my job and dream because she made me so miserable. A buddy of mine was on a construction crew that was working on her house years ago. Every day there was some issue with her. He said she was one of the most unpleasant people he has ever had to be around. She really needs to work on her attitude towards translators. Every time I've seen her have a foreign, typically Asian guest, she's extremely rude with translators. She frames it as a joke, but you can always see the discomfort in the translator's expression. Because you play the ukulele and then now you're playing uh, guitar, electric guitar, right? Yes. Yeah. What else do you want to learn? 
，你现在呃弹，学会在学怎么弹电子吉他，呃，你还想再学 ？Just one question. Just what else does he want? <laughs> I don't know what you're telling him, but just ask him what I'm saying. Okay, sorry.、Um, a few months would go by after the initial burst of people questioning Ellen's kind persona, but just when everything seemed like it was starting to die down, BuzzFeed News published an article titled "Former Employees Say Ellen's Be Kind Talk Show Mantra Masks a Toxic Work Culture." In the article, BuzzFeed would interview a mix of 11 former and current employees of the Ellen Show. They reaffirmed the public suspicions about Ellen, saying that. That be kind bullshit only happens when the cameras are on. It's all for show. I know they give money to people and help them out, but it's for show. Some employees said they were fired after taking sick days or missing work to attend family funerals. Two weeks later, BuzzFeed News released a second article that would destroy any chance of the Ellen Show restoring its image. Three of the five senior producers at Ellen were accused of rampant sexual harassment: Jonathan Norman, Kevin Lehman, and Ed Glavin. Kevin. Kevin Lehman was arguably the worst out of the three. One ex-employee said Kevin asked him to give him a hand job or perform oral sex in a bathroom. Another said they separately saw Kevin grab a production assistant's penis. In May 2017, another former employee said she saw Lehman grope a production assistant in a car and kiss his neck. Nearly a dozen former employees, who range from longtime senior-level employees to production assistants, said it was also common for Lehman to make sexually explicit comments in the office, like pointing. Out male colleagues' bulges in their crotches, or ask them questions like, "Are you a top or a bottom?" Shortly after the second article was released, Warner Bros. announced that it had fired the three producers after an investigation. On September 1st, 2020, the first episode of Ellen would air after the controversy. The episode opens with Ellen giving a monologue where she said she's taking responsibility for what happened. I learned that things happened here that never should have happened. I take that very seriously, and I want to say I am so sorry to the people who were affected. I know that I'm in a position of privilege and power, and I realize that with that comes responsibility, and I take responsibility for what happens at my show. Near the end of her monologue, Ellen said she's committed to making season 18 the best season she's ever had, but apparently she failed at doing that because the season performed horribly. Season 18 lost over a million average viewers, coming in at 1.4 million compared to season 17's 2.6 million. At this point, it became clear to upper management at Warner Bros. that Ellen had fallen out of public favor, and her show's numbers would continue to trend down. So the show was canceled, making season 19 the final season. It seemed that with the ending of her show, the controversy around Ellen would come to an end. But just when it seemed like it was over, a former guest would once again put her name in the headlines. On September 22, 2022, Rolling Stone published an article talking about Grace and Chance, a 12-year-old who was invited on the Ellen Show after going viral for singing paparazzi in his middle school gym. After his appearance on the show, Ellen gave him $10,000 and a new piano. She pulled his mom aside and told her, "You're never going to have to work again a day in your life." After signing with Ellen's record label, Chance released his first EP and began touring. But during this time, the first warning signs of Ellen's dark side began to show. My whole week, my whole month, my whole year could change with one text message from her. She would also go through his clothes, not allowing him to wear leather because of her veganism at the time. Perhaps most shocking of all, Ellen gave Chance an early copy of Justin Bieber's documentary Never Say Never. After Chance didn't get around to watching it because of his busy tour schedule, Ellen was furious. She yelled at his mom through the phone. What type of mother are you? Do you realize that I went out of my way to get this for you, and he can't sit down and watch it? Grayson would go on to release his second project with Ellen, Truth Be Told Part One. After the album sold poorly, Ellen ghosted Chance and never spoke to him again. It seems that Ellen dropped him as soon as he wasn't useful to her. If this situation happened with an adult, it wouldn't be nearly as significant. But Chance was only 14 when Ellen ghosted him. The way Grayson was treated is just another example of Ellen's two-faced persona. She's a lesson why it's dangerous to brand yourself as something that isn't who you actually are.